Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Think about it, every three seconds, someone needs blood, whether it's a cancer patient, premature baby, someone with sickle cell disease, an accident victim, or a person undergoing surgery. My next guest will break down how you can give the highly personal and unique gifts of blood and marrow and how it truly can change someone's life. Kelly Smith is the manager of Service Excellence for Blood Center of Wisconsin, and Sage Thomas is a vibrant, successful college student whose journey to be here today has not been an easy one. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. I appreciate you both being here. And if you would, Kelly, first uh, tell us more about how someone can donate blood. What are the qualifications? It, it's very easy. Um, you need to be 17 years old or 16 years old with parental consent, mm -hmm. weigh 110 pounds, and be in general good health. And it's as easy as that. All we would need would be approximately an hour of your time. Okay, so not a long list of qualifications. No, no. And uh, if for some reason someone has an issue, like maybe they're anemic, you would pick up on that and let them know that they would not be a good donor at that time. Absolutely. Uh, the first part of the donation process is a pre-screening where mm -hmm. we ask you several health-related questions um, about travel, and then we do a very a very minor um, testing of uh, your your pulse, your blood pressure, your temperature, and your um, iron count. And then at that point, if you pass all that, we'll take you in and start the donation. Okay, which also is really simple yes. and easy. And many people don't know, but fewer than 5% of the population who are eligible to donate actually do. Right. So if you would, tell our viewers at home why it's so important for them to donate. The blood donation um, is so important for patients who are sick, patients who are undergoing surgery, premature babies, and um, blood cannot be manufactured. The only place that you can get it is from another human being, mm -hmm. and so that's why it is such an important gift. And um, we need 800 people a day to donate in order to meet the needs of our patients throughout the, our communities. Yeah, so that's a big number. Big so number. it means you really count on a lot of people to come through the doors and yes. help make a difference. So yes. the more, the merrier, so that's to speak. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not gonna forget about you over there, Sage. We're gonna find out about your story, but I really wanted to lay the groundwork and help people better understand uh, what we're dealing with when it comes to donating blood. So there are donor centers located all over the state of Wisconsin. Yes. So what are some of the things that happen at those centers? Um, so at the donor center, again, you would you would check in and register. Mm -hmm. You would go through the um, preliminary conversation and health check and then uh, move right into the donor center. The donation itself takes about 15 minutes and afterwards we would invite you to relax and have a snack, a beverage, and then send you out back to your day in your normal routine. So again, about one hour of your time. Um, we have centers throughout the metro Milwaukee area in the suburbs and also in um, northern and central Wisconsin. Okay, and if people wanna know the specific locations, they can go to your website yeah. or or call 1-800-BE-A-HERO. Yes. Uh, what people may not know is during the summer and the holiday mm -hmm. season, donations drop by 20%. And I'm guessing that's because people are doing more. Absolutely. Uh, out kind of having fun in the summer sure. and during the holidays, you know, yeah. they're doing what people do. But those are the times of year you need people to say, hey, uh, let me stop by here and donate some blood, then I'll go to the mall and do more shopping. Absolutely, <laughs> we would absolutely love if part of your holiday shopping or your holiday celebrations were a stop at one of our donor centers in order to donate to help those recipients because it is so important and everyone is so busy and time strapped yeah. that they don't make time to do this very special thing. Yeah, and believe it or not, someone in our area receives a blood transfusion every four minutes. So uh, just a lot to think about yes. for sure. And so Sage, it is important for us to find out uh, some of the things that you've gone through in order to be here to tell your story today. So uh, what in fact were you diagnosed with at the age of 10 that changed your life? So I was diagnosed with aplastic anemia, which is a bone marrow failure disease. Um, so essentially your immune system attacks your bone marrow mm -hmm. and you stop producing the um, red blood cells and platelets. That's your main issue. Um, so at the time I was receiving, you know, transfusions daily. Um, platelets was a, my biggest concern, um, but I definitely got a fair amount of red blood cell donations as well. Um, so the only cure is a bone marrow transplant. 
Um, at the time, my brother was not a match. I have an older brother. So my parents actually decided to have another child who has the same bone marrow as me. Okay. So now I have a nine-year-old sister whose name is Mira, which is short for miracle. Oh. Um, yeah, so her bone marrow is the same as mine, and it's frozen because I'm now in remission. Okay, so. that is good stuff. Yeah. And these are the stories that you <laughs> like to hear. But she's here today because uh, she doesn't quite need that bone marrow transplant uh, at this time, and we hope you never do. Uh, but she depended on those transfusions yes. to keep her healthy and keep her going. Uh, do you remember when you were first diagnosed at 10? A lot of things changed, stuff we take for granted every single day, right? Yes. Um, I mean, it was little things. I wasn't allowed to brush my teeth because my gums could bleed and they wouldn't be able to stop it. Wow. Um, I couldn't brush my hair in case a follicle started to bleed. Mm -hmm. um, so just little things like that that you don't realize. And I'm 10 years old, so you know how 10 year olds yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. um, and I was a big, I was into sports. Um, so I couldn't play any sports. I wasn't allowed to go to school. Um, so just little things like that that you don't really realize until, oh, I can't brush my teeth before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. I, so little things like that that you take for granted. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. say. And so uh, she responded positively to ATG. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of people are going, what is that? <laughs> so Sage, you'll have to break it down and kind of give us an idea of what that is and how it helped you be the healthy young lady yes. that you are today. <laughs> and you're not in need of that bone marrow transplant right now. Talk right. about that. So the ATG, I don't know the technical <laughs> the technicalities <laughs> okay. of it, um, but it's taken from horse blood. Okay. So they put it into your body in hopes that your immune system will attack that versus your bone marrow. Um, and I luckily, I responded to it at the time. Um, so once my count started to become you know, normal and stable, where I was at like two transfusions a day, um, they kind of said, okay, well, you're in remission now, so we're going to go ahead. I received a pick line. Um, so it was just, you know, coming back, we went from once a day to once every two days, once every three days. So then from there, you know, the transfusions got lesser and lesser. Um, but still, I mean, it's just such a great need. There's so many kids who are still there who still mm -hmm. need those transfusions. Um, so going through what I've gone through, it makes you realize, you know, it's such a it's such a simple thing. Like she said, it's just one hour of your time to go and donate. So I mean, what better gift to give over the holidays than oh, the yeah. gift of life, truly? Because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those people. That gave that blood that yes. allowed you to get the transfusions that you needed. Yes, right. that's what this conversation is all about. Mm -hmm. And blood types are important. Um, uh, there are a lot of different ones out there, but O negative blood, if someone out there knows that that's their blood yes. type, then they are almost like a superhero they because are. why? <laughs> they are. Well, O negative is the universal blood type. Mm -hmm. It is the type of blood that is given to babies um, because we don't know what blood type they are. It's also carried on Flight for Life for patients of trauma, and it's used when we don't know the blood type of an individual. So it really is very important so that we can take care of those patients in a very timely manner without having to slow down their care to understand what their type is. Yeah, and so individuals who uh, actually do give blood, mm -hmm. what's the time period that they would wait before they give blood again? Uh, the time period is 56 days, so mm -hmm. for a whole blood donation, you would be eligible every 56 days to donate. Okay, so when we talk about uh, being the bone marrow and mm -hmm. people actually being on the registry, yes. I know for a fact that it's pretty simple in the sense that I am on the registry. It's like a swap. Correct. A swab, and if in fact your DNA matches someone else, then you mm -hmm. would be called uh, to possibly do a bone marrow transplant for that person. So uh, that really is giving a gift of yes. life, and it really is a commitment to say that you're willing to go through some uh, small changes in order to mm -hmm. save a life, mm -hmm. and that it doesn't get better than right. that, right? right. Uh, when we look at um, bone marrow and African Americans and Hispanics and Asians and really it is important for people to keep in mind that uh, patients are more likely to match a donor from their own race or ethnicity so everybody 
has the power to Absolutely. definitely get on the registry and possibly help save a life. Absolutely. All righty. So uh, if we go back, Sage, uh, let's talk about some of the things that you went through in order to um, just function on a daily basis. You know, going through a blood transfusion, what's that like? Well, I remember I would put a pillowcase over it because I didn't want to look at the blood. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, I mean, it feels weird. It's a very weird thing. Um, but it was fun. I had The nurses would come in and braid my hair when I had a transfusion or mm -hmm. they would play with little Polly Pockets with me. So those are the memories I have. Um, I was at Children's Hospital of Milwaukee and I'm still involved with them. So it was just a great experience. Um, just such a wonderful place. They help you through everything. and. I mean, for as negative of a situation that some people could consider it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't take it back. I think I've learned a lot from it. And just seeing all the people come together to help you is just truly life-changing. Yeah, and so what would you say to someone out there who's, you know, maybe on the fence about doing, sometimes people are just afraid of what they don't know. So that's right. why we're having this conversation to give the information and educate and spread awareness. So what would you say to someone about, you know, getting on the registry and donating blood? I would just say, you know, it's one, it's one simple step. You have to take that first step. Um, and once you're there, there's so many people who are there to help you through it. And after once you donate, you get a cookie or a chip. <laughs> so who doesn't want that? <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely, it's just an hour of your time, and you truly impact multiple individuals. Yes, so. indeed. And I think that you are definitely impacting people by sharing <laughs> your story, really uh, mm -hmm. letting people realize that they can donate blood to help people like you who once was in need of a transfusion mm -hmm. uh, and it helped you live a happier and healthier life. So it's all about giving the gift. <laughs> and uh, the local link to the National Be the Match Registry, the Blood Center of Wisconsin, is that. And for questions about marrow donor eligibility, people can call 1 866 702 HOPE. That's 866 702 HOPE. And Kelly, is there anything else you'd like to add to today's conversation uh, dealing with uh, the gift of life? I would. Um, Sage mentioned platelets, and that is something that we didn't talk about, but a very important part of mm -hmm. a potential blood donor. Platelets um, only have a shelf life or last for five days after donation, so we need them very frequently. And Sage mentioned how important they were mm -hmm. to her her recovery, so mm -hmm. that is another type of donation. And if you if you call us at Blood Center, if you visit a blood donation center, we will absolutely um, educate you on that type of donation and how you might be a good um, candidate for that as well. Good stuff, thank you ladies for stopping absolutely. by. Really appreciate you. your time. Kelly Smith is the manager of service excellence for Blood Center of Wisconsin, and Sage Thomas is a survivor of aplastic anemia, and a perfect example of how important it is for us all to consider giving the gift of life. For more information on anything that we've discussed today, you can log on to bcw.edu or call 1-800-BE-A-HERO. That's going to do it for today's show. I am your host, Andrea Williams. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues, Milwaukee. Have a great day.